close. Are you there? Are you there, bro? I originally created four because used to be different back in the day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, it has. It's, it's, it's done quite a transition, to be honest. Um, yeah. You know, like, I, 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 I wasn't really uh, thinking to use Instagram like that um, in any way whatsoever to... You know, I was just using it. Honestly, when I first came onto Instagram, it was just to meet some new girls and, you know, like, just, I don't know, man, just keep up to date with current affairs, like social affairs mainly. Look at some meme pages, um, you know, just post some videos and stuff. And people kept telling me, like, you should, um, you know, you should, you should show your personality a little bit. And, um, so I did. So I came out and, you know, at those times, it was, I think it was like two, just over two years ago. Um, I was just posting silly videos about, you know, just non-edited videos of an iPhone 5S, um, just to like kind of violating people. So um, I got really popular really quickly. I got like 60K followers within the space of like 11 months. Um, and I was really one of the most hated individuals in the the UK I mean you should remember yeah man that popularity was crazy nobody had that kind of popularity at, that, at those times mm -hmm. in that kind of quick time I remember like when I used to jump on live and I used to get like 2,000 minimum live viewers yeah and, um, <laughs> all of this was going through my head you know I used to I used to um, I used to go to like Birmingham I used to go to Cardiff I used to go to Manchester and like girls would I mean I'm sure some of them follow me now girls would come up to me and like oh my goodness like your ace like can I, and i'm just like what the fuck do these lot look up to like i just i'm just on instagram like i'm not a fucking famous individual or nothing like that you know but yeah. they just wanted to take videos and sit on our tables and and this was all going to my head as well like i was i was liking this and i'll go to like birmingham and everybody would know who i am and like yeah i'll be like this is crazy like this is a whole different city and people from the u.s are telling me that you know they're they they listen to me out there and people sending me videos from australia and russia and all sorts of places you can name philippines yeah. saying that you know they watch me out there and i'm just like this is crazy man <laughs> and then um yeah at these times i was a muslim as well Obviously, yeah. these times I was a Muslim, and uh, mm -hmm. I was a strong Muslim. Like I would have, I was willing to, like anything, I was willing to stand till the till the last days for my faith. And um, hold on, Hades, we done playing while I'm podcasting, bro. Come on, man, have some respect. <laughs> my dog wants to play a little bit. Um, so let me take him out. Give me a second, Hades. Yeah. I'm moving like that news reporter. Have you seen that um, news reporter? The one that where his kids walk into his room while he's having. Oh a yeah, yeah. And he, kicks them out <laughs> and he kicks out his maid as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just doing that to my dog. Crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, these times I was a Muslim. I was like your number one conspiracy theorist. I was a flat earther. Yeah. I don't know if you yeah. was you following me back then. I was. The, the reason I followed yeah, yeah. you. Do you was remember when I was a flat earther? Yeah, I, I I was into conspiracy theories and things like that. Um, I was lost myself too, you know. And I was like, oh, this, okay. this guy, you know, it's interesting. I want to see what, he, what, okay. he, what he's got to say. Yeah. Yeah. See, some people like to call conspiracy theories lost, but at least conspiracy theorists are at a stage to question, you know? Um, before you get to understanding um, the truth and understanding reality, you have to become a conspiracy theorist. A conspiracy theorist is just somebody who likes to question things and doesn't want to go with the typical thing that they've been fed. You feel me? So everybody should be a conspiracy theorist. Everybody should. Um, I feel. I feel like it's very interesting as well. Why not? <laughs> they learn about the Illuminati and all sorts of lizard people and whatnot. So why not? But um, yeah, man, I was a major conspiracy theorist. I was. I was. I was a flat earther, and um, you know, I, I, I fully in my head believed. Yeah, in I, obviously, there's a difference between having faith yeah. and knowing. 
what's mm -hmm. real. So science, something that's factual, that can be backed by science, is a fact. And yeah. uh, that's, that's, that's the only time you can actually know something within your mind. But faith has got nothing to do with that. Faith is separate. Faith is more religious, it's more spiritual, it's more believing. So I fully believed that everything that I thought I believed was 100% true. Islam and flat earth and I used to I was trying to I was indoctrinating my family at this time as well yeah so my brother for example uh you know my my younger brother he was um he was studying medicine at this point and obviously right. uh, to tell him that the world is flat and trying to explain to him he's obviously not going to really take that in and I was you know my persuasion skills were quite good but uh, and plus, obviously, being the elder, you know, mm -hmm. um, but thankfully, he didn't really submit to it. He would still question and think, how can it be so? And then I'll explain to him, like, you know, these silly things like, oh, look, the horizon always looks flat, no matter how high you up you go. And look at this video on YouTube and, <laughs> you know, and um, the last thing he wasn't really it wasn't really making sense. And then at the last point I said to him, I was like, look, in the Quran, it says that the earth is flat. What are you going to say now? That is when I caught him. And he couldn't yeah. say shit. And he was like, wait, what? I was like, yeah, look. In the Quran, it says it. And Allah, who knows more? Allah was a scientist. And he was like, ah, oh, oh, fuck. All right, say no more, say no more. Imagine, <laughs> with, this, with this religion, I indoctrinated yeah. him. So when I couldn't use rationality, logical science, I used the religion. And obviously, you can't doubt the religion of... God, you can't really doubt it, you know, so everything is perfect. And uh, if you doubt it, you become a unbeliever. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, man, we started going into it as well. Then I started kind of like falling out with certain people in my family because they were telling me to stop doing that, like stop telling people that the earth is flat. <laughs> yeah. Um, one time I was on live and on Insta Live and there was people jumping on and it was kind of funny because... I was fully with my full heart uh, indoctrinating you lot and telling you lot that the earth is flat. And I noticed that I did some polls at the beginning and then mm -hmm. over a, like a two week period, it started with only like 10% believing the earth is flat to about 80% believing that the earth is flat. <laughs> Jesus. And um, I was like, wow, I've got a huge impact on these individuals. And, you know, I'm doing so good. Like, yes, I'm getting people to follow the truth. Because at that time, I believed that was the truth, you know. Yeah. And I remember one time uh, an ex-Muslim jumped on to um, the Insta Live and they mm -hmm. were telling me, like, they're an ex-Muslim, they've left. And I was like, bro, are you crazy? You're nuts. How the hell have you left Islam? Like, you're nuts. Yeah. And I didn't really hear about it, but because I didn't know, I was just clueless. I was, it's like, it's like... It's like um, if you go to a plumber and you ask mm -hmm. him to write you a politics, uh, you know, uh, essay, mm -hmm. he'll say, mate, what the fuck are you talking about? You know, like, yeah. he doesn't know. But if you <laughs> ask him to fix your plumbing or your pipe, your, your drain pipes, you, I'm sure he'll fix them up. You yeah. know, it's about, it's about the individual and what they can acknowledge at that time. And at that time and at that point. I was just not in the scope of mind to comprehend what I do now. So, um, yeah, man. Yeah, so, I, it's funny, it's I, did a thing with, I did a similar thing with my best friend. You know, I was taking him to uh, mm. classes, uh, Quran classes and stuff, and he, he converted. But yeah, but what, mm -hmm. what changed for you? Uh, what was it when you were thinking, okay, I, I'm, something's a bit wrong here. What made you go down that? Um, yeah, yeah, man, that's, that's the thing. So, like, at this point, you know, when I like to sometimes jokingly um, call it degenerate mindset, you know, people think yeah. that I specifically <laughs> pick out an individual to call them a degenerate. That's not true. What I call a degenerate mindset is a backwards mindset, a mindset that has regressed in their consciousness. Mm -hmm. uh, they haven't progressed in any way. And um, in that sense, for example, uh, I, can, I can state that at this point in time, I was my religious understanding of life, you know, of, of, of God was completely ridiculously wrong. I was mm -hmm. basically praying to an Arab God. Um, and, 
you know, um, my understanding of reality, my understanding of truth, my understanding of purpose, my understanding of honor, of 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 everything that matters in life was completely mm-hmm. flawed, and um, and and illogical, irrational, untrue, and it made no sense. And so was my family. So my family were completely lost in it as well. Mm-hmm. My, you know, if you know Mars, he was talking about within the next three years uh, to fully submit into the dean, mm-hmm. you know, getting married and just praying five times a day, fasting all the time and becoming a full on um, haji, <laughs> you know, and um, yeah, man. And I was, I was looking at it like, okay, but it was at this point where I felt, I felt like I knew and I felt like I was comfortable, but at the same time, I feel like I was, I mean, since young, I've been, even when I was a young kid, um, yeah. I've always questioned everything. I mean, I've, I read, I read the Bible and um, multiple Bibles uh, mm. by the age of 10. Yeah. I had so much interest in all these stories and I used to always come back to the teachers and ask them questions like, um, you know, why doesn't the Bible ever speak about the dinosaurs? Why doesn't the Quran ever speak about the dinosaurs? Mm-hmm. Well, for example, Noah's Ark. I still remember oh, yeah. I was in year three and I went up to, yeah, I was, I was about 10 and I, yeah. went to, I went to my, sorry, not even 10. God damn, what was I? Wow, I was like eight. Seven or eight? Wow! Look at that. Yeah, man. So I, I, I've, I think it was one of the first times I heard Noah's story, like from a biblical perspective. And the first time I, when I heard it, I was like, um, like, okay. So if they put two of every animal, how big was this ship? Like, you know, and uh, in the Bible, it specifically tells you how big it is. Mm-hmm. And then I asked. Like, no kid, uh, all the other kids were just back to, yeah, <laughs> yeah let's go play. Yeah. <laughs> Me, you I don't think of there, it. Like, <laughs> nah, man, I was just there. I was trying to break into the ether. <laughs> I was trying yeah. to understand what the hell, the, like, what, what kind of ship did God create for all these animals to fit in there? And um, I've always been that extremely... You know, I'm always asking questions, even since I've been a child, the young, you know, my dad's always said that of all of us, I've, I've always asked the qu- most questions and I've always been the most intuitive. I've always wanted to know more. And uh, if I didn't know, I would do everything that I can, no matter how mad it is to find yeah. out. Um, so, yeah, I was asking, like, how did all these animals fit into the thing? And then the teacher who was a uh, the, the, the fool themselves and this is why we need to take into effect how much a teacher how important a teacher is because they indoctrinate your child by any word that they speak on we mm. need to take into effect these things um this is why homeschooling in the future which i've seen will be a huge huge foundation to build upon as well um mm. but for example the teacher said to me instead of instead of her saying to me yeah that's actually a good question and uh, the truth is well christianity isn't real and uh, obviously these stories were made um just about two thousand years ago and back then p- human minds were much more primitive than they are today so they gave them these stories to to make them believe in these um prophets that probably never even existed and um, obviously after time, especially in those times, Chinese whispers can make somebody a lot grander than they actually are. Yep. We already know that uh, appreciation only seems to grow as soon as absence comes in to a perspective. So, oh, yeah. for example, if, 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 if one of your family members that you're close to, but you don't like... If I was to ask you, do you fully appreciate them? You'd say, no, I don't fully appreciate them. If, if they were to die right now, I promise you that pain would slap you in the face so hard your ancestors would feel it. You feel yeah. like it's like a what, it's like when a rapper yeah, dies. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna feel yeah. it because you know yeah. absence makes the heart grow fonder. That's a fact. That's a truth. And um, mm. at the end of the day, you know, I, she never said that. Instead, she was like, "Oh, God, sh- um, shrunk the animals," and. Um, he basically put them to sleep 
And that's why the... Uh, oh, sorry, he shrunk them. So the next question I said is, okay, so if there's two... Li uh, sorry, if there's lions in there and, like, z goats or zebras, uh, surely the lions would have to eat and they would eat the zebras. So then what happens then? And then she said, well, God put them to sleep. Again, this was her second opportunity, not to lie, to question reality and make her brain think this phenomenal brain that have been that we have evolved to comprehend i mean our mindset our brain is the most evolved of any species that exists and uh, it's it's only a foolery and a mockery that we don't take much use of it um especially when something is as simple as logic and you know common sense but unfortunately it's not always in place for a lot of people so in this instance you got to look at it like this was a second opportunity for her to tell me, well, you know, this isn't true again. Da, 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 da. This is another contradiction. But instead, she said, well, she shrunk. Uh, they, you know, uh, God shrunk the animals and um, put them to sleep. Of course, me and my phenomenal brain at this young age was still not satisfied with this. Um, with this, um, get out, Hades. Hades, get out with these um, answers and it didn't make sense to me. So at this yeah. point, I asked her next question. Um, so when, you know, the ship stopped and the animals came out, um, obviously two lions and two zebras, and, you know, two goats or whatever. So when they come out, again, surely these animals have to eat and all the anim other animals have been killed. Right. Um, if the lions eat the zebra, doesn't that mean that the whole species completely is eradicated dies out I never said eradicated at that time I said dies out yeah. um, and she was just looking at me she was like look she was like I think you need to just um, ask Mr. Deval that was another teacher at that point okay. and uh, she she basically pawed me off she she was too dumb to answer my question basically and we give we give like um, humans don't really understand at this point in time how uh, important how imperative a teacher's responsibility and role is in, in an individual in a child's life in a child's oh, yeah. upbringing and um, you know we need to take a lot more a lot more responsibility to know exactly who we're allowing to teach our kids because mm -hmm. I promise you every single sentence that a teacher provides can have an impact on a growing mind and uh, thankfully I wasn't the typical simpleton um, yeah. that was just easy to, you know. Sorry, my, my Hades is just trying to get in. But, um, yeah, man. And then from here, I was questioning. Sorry, let me just get back into it. I was just questioning that one of my friends, a very close friend of mine, uh, I, I, I kind of met him around the same time, uh, around this time where I was becoming a huge conspiracy theorist. Okay. And um, I was going into. Islam really deeply as well and trying to learn the deen, trying to get closer to it. But as I was getting closer and as I was reading the Quran, there was things that wasn't making sense to me. Yeah. And uh, prior to this, I was in, I was in, uh, obviously I was in prison and uh, for pr in prison for like six months, I was reading the Quran pretty much every day. Um, okay. Not just reading it for like spiritual reasons, I was reading it to learn it to understand it to test it to see if it's true and yeah. there were so many verses that would come up like for example i saw the verse um there's so many verses off the top of my head i can name like one of the verses like it's talking about dul karnayn zul karnayn i'm sure you know mm -hmm. yep yeah and he's talking and he's talking about basically zul karnayn is following so far east to see the setting place of the sun and where it got to the setting place it saw that it sets in a murky spring yeah i was like what the fuck that doesn't make sense like we don't live on a flat earth this is before i became a flat earther and my yeah. soulmate who was a christian he was mm -hmm. like bro like the, the like he's talking the truth bro the earth is flat i was like bro you're retarded man you're nuts he's like no you can't say that bro like obviously the quran says as well you believe the quran to be the word of god and i was mm -hmm. like yeah now at this point i didn't have that logical reasoning question uh like to question it to say what if it isn't the word of god you feel me because nobody's questioned it so far i've never heard somebody say from my family 
or any Afghan to turn around and say, hello, have you not ever said like, can we actually test this Arab book and see why it's in Arabic? Can we actually see why the language of God is in Arabic? Have you ever asked mm. yourselves if this is actually the word of God? Can we just actually test it? But unfortunately, I haven't had really much, many, many conscious individuals in my family or my generation. So, or in, in, in amongst my people, unfortunately. So hopefully that we can change that in time. And um, once I started questioning, again, I came out of prison and, yeah. um, you know, this, all these questions, I basically answered them with flat earth conspiracies. For example, when I, when I was reading the Quran that, you know, yeah. it's, uh, that Zul Qarnay went so far no. east, he saw the, the sun set into a muddy spring. And when I researched it on flat earth, they basically said the same thing. So I was like, yo, the Quran and, the, and these conspiracies are real. Like, space yeah. is, isn't even real. Like, there's a dome. Like, the Quran says there is. There's a dome on top of this earth. You yeah. know? Yeah. And, of course, in my understanding and beliefs is that Islam is your religion. There's, you know, nearly, nearly mm -hmm. 1.8 billion people following it in the world. And, um, you know, surely it must be the truth. This is what I've been taught. All of my family, my generation, everybody that has died for this, like, all these books that have been written, all these men in history that haven't been able to really break it down. You're telling yeah. me that I'm the one that has? Like, I'm... what? Nah, man, this can't be true. This, there's, there's no way, man. This this doesn't make no sense. Like, yeah. so I, I, it can't be me. Like, my dad never found out. His dad never found out. And I'm the one that's going to find out. Here I've got my brothers uh, becoming hajis and that soon enough. Like, and yeah. I'm going to tell them, no, no, this is all lies. Um, yeah. So I had to research more, but as I was researching, more and more things came out. I saw in the Quran that, for example, that the Quran predates the Samaritans uh, by over a thousand years. Uh, mm. There's a verse in the Quran where um, Allah mistakes Miriam, um, mm. the sister of Aaron and cousin of Moses, who lived over a thousand five hundred years ago, uh, a thousand five hundred years before Jesus, yeah. to Mary, the mother of Jesus. There's another verse where um, it says how Jews worship Ezra as the son of Allah, oh, yeah. which is not true. Ezra is a priest, like he's not even a prophet. So yeah. how are you saying? How can Allah not know that? We know that today. Them not know you that. How can you not know that? But clearly, it shows that. In the area, somebody must have misinformed Muhammad or somebody else, and they must have wrote that down. There's other verses that I saw that uh, it was basically saying that the sperm is found in the backbone. Oh, yeah. Uh, I That's saw verses. Fun. Yeah, I saw verses talking about uh, how uh, Allah's, like, as I was reading the Quran, like, you can tell Allah is mad angry. Like, he's very mm -hmm. angry. Like, if somebody was to uh, be asked a simple question, like, um, do you think that this book is portrays evil or good? I mm. promise you, if you was to ask some like neutral individuals and you was to show them verses of the Quran, 99% of people would say it's evil. Mm. Because in the Quran, you cannot have good by having evil in the same sentence. That's it's, no, it's, no. It's, it's illogical to have good. Like you, if I was to, I always give this analogy. Forget, I mean, God is perfect, right? I mean, everybody yeah. should know that. All mm. right, so... To accept God, you will accept God in his perfection. Yeah. Of course. And God you'd accept is the most important thing to understand in reality, right? Of course. The, if, if somebody, I mean, obviously to atheists that wouldn't make sense, but the logical question would be, if God existed and somebody realized the understanding of God, mm -hmm. that understanding of God would be the most important Thing in existence, right? Yep, yep. I'd have seven billion people here watching me instead of a hundred and twenty. So, <laughs> so now, what was I getting to, man? So yeah, so uh, the understanding of God is the most important. So for me, I never even doubted it. I, I thought, like, surely it would never. Nobody would ever manipulate people like this about God. Like, I mean, I mean, look, people are praying every day. People are going to Mecca, all sorts. And then yeah. questions started arising. So, for example, in the Quran, God calls Christians and Jews and people that are non-believers the worst of creatures. 
Mm-hmm. And for me, it, like if you was to put two questions together, if I was to say, would God be more compassionate and uh, understanding of all creatures and name them all and have love for all of them? Or would he actually call somebody just because Wars. they don't believe in him, the worst of creatures? That doesn't make sense. Exactly. Like, how can you call a creature the worst if you're a God? Like you're creating yeah. life for everything. Everything should be beautiful. You feel me? You shouldn't be calling things the worst, especially Christians and Jews and at these times, you're the same God who has sent down thousands of prophets that are Jews. You send down this one Arab prophet and all of a sudden you hate Jews now. Like, yeah. Yeah. clearly it's an Arab religion. You feel me? Yeah. So, another thing is, um, I looked in and it was, it was, there's a verse in the Quran, 65.4. And when you look at all the classical uh, interpretations and the tafsirs as well, and you look at uh, that Muhammad married a six-year-old and he was... Uh, uh, you know fornicating with her from the age of nine and in the quran it says in the, uh, verse 65 4 that um you, uh, women uh, have a basically women that are that can divorce um even if they have not menstruated and when you look at the understanding of this verse it basically breaks down that there's three types of women who do not menstruate somebody and there's a there's a hadith about this as well uh, yeah. uh you know and there's three type of women that don't menstruate one is uh, women that are pregnant two is women that are too old who have gone past uh the age of uh, being able to uh, have children and three is uh girls who are too young who are underage do you understand? So, um, you know, with this, you got to, you know, when you look at this verse and you understand that this basically is allowing uh, child rape, uh, underage rape of children that have not even achieved uh, menstruation. And when you look at the scholars of uh, uh, Islam, the most uh, well-known scholars from uh, Ibn Ubay to uh Ibn Taymiyyah to all these scholars that are very well known in the Muslim world when you understand the hadith they all accept that marrying a girl at the age of nine or at the age of six even is completely permissible because Muhammad himself did it and uh, they even break down uh, reasonings as to being able to consummate um, sexual intercourse with uh, girls who haven't even achieved menstruation and uh, you know they've broken these downs in tafsirs and other uh, scholarly writings and um, for me this is extremely detrimental and it's, uh, it's one of the main causes uh, for uh, hu- the huge prevalences of child marriages in Muslim countries yeah. and uh, child mutilation, child genital mutilation, sorry. Uh, so, for example, in Somalia, over 90% of young girls uh, have their clitoris genitally mutilated um, because they believe that if they keep the clitoris, uh, this would uh, give them more chance to possibly cheat or, uh, you know, stray in the future. So they're basically stopping the enjoyability of sex. Enjoyability is that even a word. But yeah, you know what I mean. Um, there's a lot of detrimental effects that Islam has, uh, mainly not just on society, not just on women, not just on children, not just on the conscience of humans. Uh, it regresses us completely. I mean, uh, you know, if science states something, for example, science can prove factually evolution is true. And uh, Islam says, nope, you know, God created Adam and Eve naked in a garden. And, you know, he popped out Eve from Adam's rib. And then yeah. for some reason, God got angry because he told him not to eat from a tree that they, you know, that they basically ate from. And for that reason, yeah. he kicked them out. And because of hella inbreeding, here we all are from different castes yeah. and races and all this, you know, it's a bit... Which, which makes no sense. Yeah, and uh, we're, uh, there's absolutely no evidence whatsoever. This is a very primitive understanding of our, uh, of our origins, extremely primitive. Yeah. And um, we need to progress beyond this. We are better than this. This is the 21st century. We are 
trying to co- uh, understand quantum physics. We are trying to comprehend consciousness. We are trying to comprehend Jassim. We are trying to comprehend uh, the nature of space and, uh, you know, uh, the universe. We shouldn't be, you know, having a philosophy to live by, which is barbaric. Yeah. It predates uh, our understanding of everything, and it's completely ridiculous. And uh, for that reason... Uh, we need to wake up. It's not just Islam, it's any religion that makes you blind to reality. Whether it's Buddhism, Hinduism, Sikhism, Christianity, Mormonism, they all have their own ridiculous analogies. So, yeah. Mm. So, you, you changed and started questioning, you know, your beliefs. Then, how did you then discover Yasin, as you call it? Okay. That's a juicy question there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you got time, you you've, been, you've, been, you've been poking at this to get at this, huh? <laughs> I mean, if you, you know, it comes up next, I guess after you. You know what? Let me. Question. What I'll do? Mm. Give, me, give me a little. Give me a little tea break for this before I answer right. this. But let me just switch on the comments for now. Let's see what people think so far. Okay, sweet. You're doing. You're doing good, though, Shaz, man. Well done. Thanks, bro. Well done. I've got the verses up, by the way, for the... Right on. Mm-hmm. Um, what does it say? Got for Ezer? For Ezra or the Murky Spring? Say that again, bro. I said I got the verses for, you know, the, the things that you quoted. Okay, which Which one? So for the sun setting in a murky spring, that is Surah 1886 for... I don't even know what Surah that is. You need to tell me, like, what, you need to oh. tell me, like, what it is. I can get it for you. Give me a second. 1883. That is... A bit disappointing, you know. Hmm? A lot of people don't look into the Quran with much detail. You know, when you go to talk to them, they're like, "Oh, we don't have knowledge about this. Oh, we'll ask about this." You know? Okay, okay. Have you have you got the verse? Yeah. If you type what in, verse did you want to ask me about? I, I was just I was just giving for reference. You know how you mentioned the sun setting in the muddy spring. Oh, I was giving, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, man. I was a little bit confused. Say no more. All right. So, let's go ahead, man. Let's, let's, um, um, do, 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 do. <laughs> hey, let me ask this. So, somebody just asked, bro, how comes Allah put the male G spot in the ass but made anal haram? <laughs> I don't know how to answer that one. <laughs> hey, let me just switch off the comments before I can. That's a bit mad, bro. Like, is, you know that's a bit crazy mm. and and it's mad because Allah punishes these lot really badly um, mm. you know but um, the homosexuals and that but it's, it's atrocious you know like it's crazy and it's true it's, it's a relevant question to be honest why would Allah put the male G-spot in the butt for many many individuals many men um, and, and still make it haram it, it, it makes no sense but yeah man anyways how did we discover Jassim? Yeah. Excuse me. So, as I was as lost as ever, um, mm-hmm. you there? Um, yeah. So, yeah, man, this, this pop is crying. As I was um, as lost as ever, one of my friends told me that um, there's this specific thing, there's this specific herbs that if you consume it, we will not yeah. name them specifically on this podcast, but okay, okay. due to some reasons, um, because obviously um, I don't want it to get locked off or anything, but uh, due to some of these herbs that we 
you know, he told me about. He told me that yeah. he might let me experience something, you know? Okay. And um, I said, okay, let's go ahead. Let's, let's do this. And I did my research, went on YouTube, went on online, did my research. And, you know, there wasn't nothing wrong with it. It doesn't pollute you or anything. Doesn't do at this point in time. I didn't know anything about these things. Okay, I had no. I, had no, I mean, you, you you remember? You guys all remember? You know, you lot have been on the same journey as me, technically. Um, yeah. Following as well and seeing how everything's been working out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, at this point, at this point as well, I was at the most popular point in in on. I've been on Insta. I was on sixty five k followers. Mm -hmm. uh, when I used to come on live, it used to be at least minimum 2,000, uh, sorry, at least 1,800 to 2,500 live viewers. You remember, right? Yeah, yeah. I do. I, do. Um, I used to charge £400 for a story post, mm -hmm. story promo, and I never even used to promo people on my main page because I'd say, like, unless you're paying 2000 don't mm -hmm. bother. <laughs> um <laughs> And I was, I was just man. I could, I could have sold out anything. I could have done anything with, with where I was going. And I was getting known everywhere. Like people with a million followers couldn't attract the, the attention that I could. Um, mm. And uh, it was good. Like I could, I could literally make one video, and the whole of like Manchester would be talking about, it, or the whole of Birmingham would be talking about, it, or the whole of freaking London would be talking about me. You feel me? So it was yeah. funny. And um, I used to get hated a lot. All the big, big promo pages would shout me out. Um, and at, at one point, there was like, psh, there were so many girls in my DMs. It was ridiculous. Like I had, I had, like, I was just airing models. Like no tomorrow. It was just like, I allow it, man. This is, this <laughs> one's not. This one's a bit too. This, this one's a bit too. Uh. And and this is, yeah, because I had a pr primitive mindset at this point. This was my. Yeah. This was my ego. I was just experiencing like a typical animal does, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's sexual or whether it's a pr it's, it's very primitive, um, uh, short term success, short term satisfaction, you know. Yeah. Or money, or clubbing, or cars, or these dumb simpleton things, and uh, mm -hmm. that's what I cared about a lot. Clubbing and shit like that, and then anyways, here we got these herbs, uh, and we didn't know how to do it my my boy did it before and uh, you know it's going to be good when he joins the podcast um he'll be able to speak about the experience Sweet. and it was the first time i did it i did it with my brother and one of my guys mm -hmm. and uh, not the guy that got it for me another one of my boys uh, got you, got you. yeah so the guy that got it for me he was busy that night so i was a bit too excited so i thought let's just do it anyway so i went first i did it and Oh my days! I had a, I had a very deep experience, and um, okay, what I experienced is right. I'm gonna break this down, and guys, try and comprehend this as much as you can. Now, through uh, the Abrahamic faiths, we comprehend. For example, we we used to understand heaven to be this place where you'd get like a big golden mansion or for example in in islam you get a huge house and the better you are the more you've done for islam the bigger your house is the more slaves you have as well in islam you also get slaves by the way which is ridiculous but um uh, you also get obviously um huris which are technically sex slaves they're basically these beautiful you know yeah. things that these women who don't have free will, who are basically just there to serve you and have sex with you. And they're extremely beautiful. And that's, you know, that's what a man gets. And uh, they, they have nice tits as well. Apparently, yeah. you know, in the Quran, it does say that they have full, you know, full yeah. breasts. Uh, full breasts, basically meaning that the, not, not, uh, the breasts don't sag. Uh -huh. uh, and, uh, you know... You get these beautiful houses. You eat lots of these beautiful fruits and this milk, honey, wine river. Um, even though in the Quran it says that alcohol is a creation of the devil. But these times Allah gives alcohol to Muslims when they go to heaven. But for some reason the alcohol is not intoxicated, which is, you know, a bit weird. It doesn't make sense. Doesn't, exactly. It doesn't make it. It's another flaw in the 
ideology. Clearly, Mohammed wasn't that smart. But um, it's targeting the curiosity. Exactly. But uh, um, yeah. So at this point, what I was seeing, I, I was communicating with something that didn't make sense to me. It was. It wasn't. It wasn't human. It wasn't anything that I've ever seen or could comprehend. It was beyond my comprehension. I was just trying to fathom what it was and it was too grand for my understanding. All right. It was... Uh, it, it, but what I did understand and what something inside me tapped into was that I knew that this was either God or a God. Okay. <clears throat> Now, when we think of the infinite, let me ask you something. When we think of the infinite, what is infinity? Never ending. That's what I think of. If I it's ask close. you, can infinity be one, meaning all, would that make sense to you? Yes, I would say so. Because infinite basically is Maybe. never ending. So if exactly. I say it's one, that means it's one whole thing. Yeah. And you could comprehend why that. So, for example, if I saw this universe is infinite, but this mm-hmm. universe is one, mm-hmm. you'd understand how that would make sense, right? Yeah. If I also said that infinite is many, of course, mm-hmm. that would make sense to you as well, right? Yeah. So, in that way, for the first time in my life, I actually communicated with God. And okay. uh, I, I saw this... This... This I don't want to call it a thing because a thing is a physical thing. This um, this what I could comprehend. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was interdimensional. It was beyond the scope of our three dimensions. And um, being in the third dimension, we cannot comprehend anything that is beyond our dimensions. It's, it's basically beyond our scope of understanding, which would be the same for if there was a two-dimensional being, they wouldn't be able to comprehend what three-dimension is. Because in their universe, that logic, that 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 part of physics doesn't understand, that doesn't exist, so they wouldn't comprehend. Yeah. Uh, looking at it, I, I just couldn't really understand what it was but I know that it was communicating with me and what it was showing me that for example before my comprehension of God was that God was a he You, uh, for example in Islam or mm-hmm. for example Christian you can never say that God is a she God is known yeah. to be a male yeah what the, the God the entity the the being the, the infinite whatever this was showed at this point remember I, I didn't know that this was God I, I, I'm not really sure i'm just completely awed by it okay um it's only after about a few months where i fully started comprehending and believing and understanding through because me i don't just jump into accepting something i need to test it i need to see if it's true i need to check if this wasn't just a hallucination just a joke yeah you know yeah just some kind of you know, flaw in my mentality was mm. was this just something that I just took, where it just showed me some something that I just can't really understand yet. Mm. So, um, at this point in time, this was the first time we're communicating, and like I said, I, I used to believe, as as we all believed, and as Muslims would always say, that God is a he. And uh, this entity showed me a male figure. Mm-hmm. And it slowly started growing and growing and growing, and it started interlocking with a feminine side, a feminine energy. You could okay. uh, understand it as. And as the feminine came out of nowhere, I knew that this was a feminine energy because it separated into a male and a female, mm-hmm. and then it became one again. And then it started intertwining, and then it became one. Okay. And suddenly it made sense to me, like, it's true. Why would God be a male? Wouldn't it make more sense if God wasn't anything? Isn't yeah. a male and a female just a human construct? Mm. Oh my days. And it made perfect sense. Like, yeah, God isn't a male or female. It was it was it wasn't anything technically. And, yeah. and it's true. How can an infinite how can something that's infinite be a male or a female or or anything? You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's one. The next part is that I saw that this this plane that I was in, mm-hmm. um, I went into an interdimensional realm. 
and I accessed a realm that I don't believe anybody else has accessed before. Um, okay. I've researched a lot on YouTube. I'm sure you have as well. I've told you to research also. Mm -hmm. I've told you to question the things that people in the past have been questioned. And I've told many other people and all the people that are watching after this, they can go and see what other philosophers and other religious individuals, whoever has said on these things. And uh, nobody has really mentioned some of these points. For example, um, you know, uh, in regards to heaven, mm -hmm. why does... Why do we need to eat if we've died and we've gone somewhere? Wouldn't the pleasures be more than that? I mean, eating is such a human pleasure. When you think about it, it's such a primitive pleasure. Um, when you think about it, it's a low physical uh, living pleasure. You know, yeah. for example, if I was to say to you something which lives in the four dimensions, mm -hmm. it doesn't need to eat to survive. It's, into the, it's, it's, it's from a higher dimension. It doesn't require to consume food to keep living. In fact, being in the four dimensions means you don't actually even die because you're outside of the space. You're outside of space and time. Space okay. and time doesn't affect you. So how can you ever die? Mm -hmm. Now, if you die and you go to heaven, mm -hmm. why would you need to eat fruits? Is it because... Because we eat food, think about it logically, we eat food yeah. to keep ourselves living, technically. If, you, if mm -hmm. I was to ask you the simplest way, reason, why do you eat, you would not to say survive. because it tastes good, you would to say survive. Because, yeah, to survive, to yeah. live. So, again, it showed me that there's, it, that's a, such a primitive pleasure, it's a humanly physical, earthly pleasure, you know, um, once you die, and if you've accessed your purpose, you cannot comprehend the pleasures that you will account for. And I promise you, none of them is eating foods. You can create a whole new universe to create nearly infinite amounts of foods that dwarf the taste of what you have tasted and deserved just to live that experience. Well, mm -hmm. to first reach that experience, you need to commit to your purpose on this earth first. If you haven't attained your purpose here, you're not going to um, go beyond this realm. And, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that was the second thing that, that, you know, food and, you know, for example, another thing is that why do you get houses in heaven made out of gold and diamonds and rubies? And it never talks about any space rocks or anything else. It specifically talks about all the rocks that exist on earth. Oh, and it talks about gold, which is a metal that exists on earth. But uh -huh. again, if I was to ask you, what is a house for? You would say again, yeah. to live. To yeah. provide me protection so I can live better. Again, mm -hmm. to live is the purpose of a house. Again, if yeah. you're in heaven, why do you need a house? Who are you trying to stay away from? Or what are you trying to keep out? Like, yeah. do you know what I mean? So another. Another point is we give value, we give the value to gold, diamond, metals, and things like that. So what value would it have in the, you know, a heaven sense? It's if it's infinite, you know. <laughs> that, was gonna, that was going to be my next point because the next point is if we put into perspective what is more valuable, what do you think is more valuable, diamonds or wood? Well, diamonds on earth, you know, that's what we would say. We would say that, but in the universe. Uh, sorry, in our whole solar system, the only place that has wood is Earth. <laughs> Diamonds <laughs> exist everywhere. It is but, so abundant in, in, in the universe. There are complete stars and, and, and moons and Earths made out of diamonds. In, in fact, there's a meteorite which is in our solar system, mm. which has, I believe, 74 quintillion tons of diamonds. They're yeah. saying that on, on Venus, it rains diamonds, possibly, or on Jupiter, one of the planets. Yes, I think it's Jupiter. Yeah, yeah Jupiter, sorry. Um, it rains diamonds. I mean, wood is a is, is much, much, much more resourceful or more, um, you know, beneficial. It's much more worthy than diamonds. But obviously, because humans are easy, easily manipulated and indoctrinated, and um, they use this rock, which is shiny and is hard, and mm -hmm. they make people buy, pay, pay thousands and thousands of pounds for each carrot, which is ridiculous. And it doesn't really have any value. So, um, 
you know, unless you're unless you're using it, unless you're very intelligent, and you're using certain types of cuts to make profit on in the future. Um, that's a different thing. That's you're looking for a different purpose within it. But if your purpose is to buy diamonds so you can show off and uh, you know make people like you more, then that's different. Mm-hmm. So again, um, that's another reason. Why would you have diamonds on your house? Who are you trying to show? Off to? <laughs> like I don't understand. Whoa. And plus, if it, the more intelligent you are, the more conscious you are, the less you care about this shit. The less you care yeah. about diamonds and gold and shit like that to show off or put onto. Who the hell would put diamonds on their house? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's pointless. It's pointless. Yeah, so that was, a, and then, and then I started seeing um, that the foundation wasn't fear. So, for example, the foundation on belief in Islam or Christianity mm-hmm. is technically fear. It's mm-hmm. not. It's not anything else. It's good. It's fear, and uh, because there's a hellfire. So, yeah. no matter how loving this God is, brother. It's a hell. If you do not believe in him, you will burn for eternity in this hellfire where in the Quran it specifically tells you that your skin's going to get burnt off and melted off and it's going to be regrown back just so you yeah. can do the pain of burning it off again. Like what kind of sadistic, crazy, evil, manip- you know, messed up, you know, God is this? That's not a punishment, that's torture. Exactly. And then... I found out that the foundation of God must be something much greater than fear. Mm-hmm. It must be something that cannot be touched. And I've never ever said that at this point in time. I mean, you guys remember I used to just violate anybody and I never used to know these things. And I said, you know, they, I came back, I, uh, you know, when I was back and I came back to being myself, um, mm-hmm. they were like, what happened? What did you see? What, what happened? And I was just like, fuck. I was scratching my head. I was just like, it was like, I was so gobsmacked. Like if I spent an eternity of my physical life over and over again, and I knew every word in this dictionary, I would not be able to explain exactly what what I comprehended on that day. Uh, Well, what I, yeah, what I witnessed, what I experienced. And uh, one thing I could say to them is it was love. Like, and they were like, love. And I was like, yeah, like, like a deep, profound love. Like, what? Swear down. I was like, yeah. And I remember just before I did it as well, I was like, Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, la, la, la. <laughs> Like I was proper praying to Allah and more like asking. <laughs> After, that was the last time I did it. I remember that. But mm. I was extremely confused because when I came back, I was still... A Muslim, but for me, what I experience, for example, out of all the religions that you can comprehend in, in the world, Hinduism make would have made more sense to me than Islam at this point. Because yeah. it showed me a female goddess turning okay. into a male, turning into one. Mm. And nobody at this point in time did I know was saying this beside Hindus. And I started researching about Hinduism that night. And, okay. I, was like, and I, I, I didn't want to say it. I remember my ego didn't want to say it. Um, mm. But something inside me was like, you know, just be calm. It's okay. Like, don't be, you know, oh, damn, we've got one minute, 40 seconds. Um, no. Do you want to continue or end it? Ooh, let's see. Comments are on. Let's see. I've got more questions than that. <laughs> yeah, do you get interested, man? Uh, we've got one minute left, guys. Yeah, Carry on, continue. Every, everybody's saying continue, but... I've got time. I don't know about you. <laughs> Ooh, I don't really have time, mate. Like, that's the thing. Uh, nah, you gotta carry on. Ooh. All right, let's let's do it. Just a few more minutes. Just a few more minutes. All right, All right. let me come off. All right, bless. Yeah. And 
Hello back. Can you hear me? Yeah, bro. Yeah, man. This is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just wait for people to join. Well, I've got a personal. I've got a personal question uh, regarding this experience, which I'll yeah. ask once people yeah. don't know. Yeah. Okay. Cool, man. Right. There we go. A hundred people on. Sweet. All right. So, me personally, I've not done anything. You know. No herbs, nothing like that. And I, you know, I've not had any crazy experiences. But the way I got to where I am today is just by questioning myself over and over again and questioning people around me, you know. Mm. But based on what you saw the experience, how did you know you could trust it? Or, you know, what what made it, like, feel legit for you? Because for someone on the outside that's never tried something like this, yeah. I'm, that's what gets me. But, yeah. Yeah, man. No, that's that's a relevant question. I mean, how can you know somebody is, something is true? First of all, the experience that I had, nothing, I've never experienced anything realer than that. I mean, even me speaking to you right now, the experiences I have with certain herbs, um, which which have now actually become like a ceremonial, uh, like rituals for us. Uh, yeah. You know, we, we it's, it's part of, I wouldn't say, you know, it's a part of our religion because I don't classify it as a religion. But um, I do, I do commit to it religiously, as in uh, because we can understand so much, and the way that we know that we can comprehend is obviously thousands and thousands of people do these certain psychedelics, you can call them, um, on a daily basis around the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's many online YouTube videos, etc., and people usually relate their experiences and what they've learned and what they've acknowledged. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, a lot of people are very confused. I mean, somebody like, um, just to, you know, I'll come back to your question, but just somebody like Jordan Peterson, yeah. who's, you know, in, who's a professor in this field, who's world renowned for his understanding of human psychology. Mm. Yet he said he's completely, utterly, and stupendously confused about what psychedelics do, what they're teaching, and he completely has no understanding. Mm. And there's no limits to what they can teach and what they can show to the right individuals when they're ready. Um, they can also completely mess up somebody's mind as well if you pollute or if you don't which is why so many people take it and they don't learn anything I mean you you don't hear anybody coming out and saying yo like I've taken this I've understood God and I now want to commit myself to life being true and to truth and it doesn't happen you know your your characteristics come into that as well hey get out who's that Yeah, so uh, your characteristics come into as well. To a lot of people, I mean, I've, I've made this example many times, to a lot of people, enlightenment, what is enlightenment to them? To, to a lot of people, enlightenment is basically going into a temple, meditating every day, being very peaceful, you know, and that's that's enlightenment. And to another person, is basically taking their health to a very good level, um, you know, speaking what they think is conscious, and, um, you know, from their perspective, so for example, there's loads of health gurus out there that claim oh, yeah. spirituality, <laughs> that claim, uh, you know, meditation, that claim um, to be knowledgeable in all these things and to show people and teach people peace and serenity and to pe- teach people yoga and all these, you know, meditation techniques and you know, there's, there's all sorts of people that claim, but what can they really show you? Can they really prove to you what is true? Now, the way that you can prove something to be true is to test it. So, obviously, for example, what I experienced when I came out, now you got to question these things. And, yeah. you know, when you understand... When you're... Sorry. <laughs> what is that noise, man? The noise? Yeah. What noise? No, there was just mad noise there, like, I don't know, like he was ripping up paper or something. Uh, I think it could be the earphone. 
talking okay. against me. Okay, that's yeah. calm, that's calm. Um, so yeah, so the way to know whether something is true is to test it, is to question it. Um, so for example, um, what I experienced, and I'm sure this, you know, everybody knows this, to test God, to comprehend God, it's very difficult to prove God. It's pretty much close to impossible because you're trying to uh, prove something uh, which is infinite to uh, to a physical specimen, to a physical, uh, uh, through a physical comprehension. So, for example, the way we test, uh, you know, things through science is that we test something and we prove, prove it to be real by showcasing it. But how do you showcase God? <laughs> do you know what I mean? So yeah. you gotta you got to test it. So some of the things, so for example, the first time, like I said, I was a little bit confused as to exactly what I experienced. It was only months later on that I understood. Um, first thing was that the foundation, the foundation was love. Mm. Um, now, at that point, I didn't really understand love the way that I do now. And uh, the foundation was something which was profoundly uh, beyond what I could ever understand. Now, when we look at something to be the best or the the greatest or, you know, something that is good, it has to have love in it or it has to be a part of love. It has to come from love. The foundation has to be love. So, for example, you cannot be you cannot have love for something and be evil to it as well. Yeah. Okay? You cannot be disloyal to something and truly have love for it either. Of course. If you are disloyal to so for example, if I say that I love my child, okay, mm-hmm. then I can't, for example, if somebody comes and says, Oh, listen, I'll give you a hundred thousand pounds, tell me where your child is so I can kill them. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> now, which individual is gonna do that? There's very few people that will do that. And those people that would do that, their mindset is either primitive or they have a regressed mindset or unfortunately they're going through mental health issues or they're going through, you know, they've gone through trauma and they don't understand what